right? So it's the act of perception, and it won't law is supposed to respond, right? But law is supposed to say, well, sir, ma'am, this is really not a plus or symbol, but the person, a person who did this, had the intent for it to be, could have the intent for it to be a swastika. I saw a hand. Where? So this kind of reminds me, that type of theory kind of reminds me of the scenario we saw where the gentleman wanted something done about the graffiti on the thing and he saw he saw the team was and he didn't care, he just wanted something done. True. He wanted something done. But his mind was also made up that whoever did this work, the team, his perception was very strong. He did not stutter. That's what he said. It was those Latinos. Very clear. All right? He never did give a thought that any of those white kids could have done it. So the case when black go to black view, a black individual in a store, and the store security or club manager or someone is watching the black view, a black student, because in their mind, they pose to be the one that commit thefts and crime, and yet white students, white youth, are ripping them off left and right. That happened. We see that we had cases in that situation because of their bias, biases. We will get into biases in a moment. Let's take another look. What you see there? All oh, faith, right? And what else do you see there? A what? Okay, a face. You see a building. Now, who does not see a face in this picture? Who does not? Okay, very good. You see building. What else you see there? A tree. Okay. Anything else? Buildings. Okay. Someone walking away. All right. Okay. Good. All right. As you look at it closer, you see a lot of things that it could that is there. All right, and some people may not see any of it. Let's take a look at another. What about this? Two faces. What? What do you see? No. We see what? Well, one thing we see you see is what? A tree. A tree. Right. One thing you see is a tree. Do you see anything else? What? Who said? A lot of faces. How many of you see a lot of faces? Raise your hand. Okay. Where are the faces? Let's... All right. Where? Else? Right here. Okay. Let's look up here. All right. All right. You see any more faces? Okay. Right. Can you see a tree? Right. Okay. Branches and so on. All right. So you see, as you take a look at these pictures, Tell us to look and you can observe and analyze and say, hey, this is what I see and can be very sure about it. Some say, well, this is what I thought I saw and can be sure about what I thought I saw. All right? But law enforcement has to work on what? <laughs> what? Facts. Right? That's how you do investigation. Prosecutors have to work on what? What? If you prosecute, work on facts. Right. And gentlemen, this gentleman will say something. You also want to work on reasonable suspicion and probable cause. Right. And that we're going to get. Right. That's the truth, too. The reasonable suspicion and probable cause, and that came up earlier. And we'll talk about that as well. So, we already took a break. Unfortunately, we didn't have the. Donut. Um, <laughs> okay. So I feel profile. I didn't even make you hungry there, but anyway. Alright. So what is racial profiling? And as you as we take a look at the definition of racial profiling, one of the definitions you turn to a uh, well-known law enforcement officer, 
chief of police at that time in Palo Alto, California. I'm not sure if he's still in that position. Uh, by the name of Ron uh, Davis. And Ron, you see the head president of Noble. So does anyone know what Noble means? National Organization of Black Law Enforcement. Right. National Organization of Black Law Enforcement. And what the definition they use is the one that you see there. All right? And that definition, I think, is pretty clear based on what uh, Mr. Davis, or Chief Davis, said at the time. The act, intentional or unintentional, of what? A crime or incorporating, um, what's that? Proceed? Societal. Okay, societal. All right. And as you look at that definition, as the basis of factors considered, wow, I had that red given there, but it's basically it's hard to read. But anyway, it, it gives the definition of how the black law enforcement noble describes racial profiling. He also used the term of bad based policing, a bad policing as well. In if you go to the federal definition, which was pretty much was uh, issued in 2003, the Department of Justice said race profiling is the invidious use of race or ethnicity as a criteria in conducting stop, searches, and other law enforcement investigative procedures. Now, in order to understand that meaning, we have to go to the word invidious. And what does the word invidious <coughs> mean, you think? Racial profile is the invidious. What does it mean by that word? All right. Basically, what it means is unjust or unlawful. Right? So if you substitute race profile is the unjust use of race or ethnicity. Alright? The unjust use. Okay? And that's what invidious means. In the community, they may not know that. They may not know <coughs> that information in which creates, you know, concern. I saw a hand somewhere. Yes. Yeah, I had a question. Uh I don't know if it was purposely done or not, but that last question that you asked, uh, why is uh, racial profiling complaints on the rise? I, you danced around it, looked at some pictures, but I don't recall ever answering that question. I, the answer to that question specifically is because, primary, it's because community and the public, I mean, law enforcement does not see the same picture, and not see, and not only, don't see the same thing. Law enforcement can stop a vehicle because of reasonable suspicion, a problem, or could be some probable cause. Right. The other part, community may not know what reasonable suspicion is, a probable cause is. They may not see the reason for the stop. Right? But you may see as a law enforcement person because you are trained. You are trained in the area of making decisions of based on legal basis, which we'll get into this moment. Yes, sir. You see two things here. I'm seeing this federal definition states racial profiling is the unjust use of race or ethnicity as a criteria in conducting stop searches and other law enforcement investigative procedures. This indicates that there is potential and possibilities for a just use of race or ethnicity as a criteria. But, and, and you said it correctly, sir. And there's another thing that I think should be put out there that maybe the general public doesn't know. It was even stated by Chief Justice Rehnquist of the Supreme Court that the decisions that law enforcement officers make, these decisions of a probable cause, reasonable suspicion, 
are made by what a reasonable, objective police officer would determine at the time of the incident and is not to be determined by a later scholarly review by others. That's a, that's a quote from him. Well, so our basis should be, you should be thinking, what is it that the reasonable police officer thinks at the time the incident is occurring? That's the prong to be used. That's the, the, the criteria by which to judge it. A reasonable, a, a reasonable officer. Reasonable, reasonable, reasonable objective justice, police officer. All right, reasonable objective. So the question is, was also reasonable objective? I, I, no, 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 that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking what the officer, that's why these questions coming up the community is saying, was that officer used, did he or she use reasonable objective? But it's to be judged by what other reasonable objective police officers would do in a similar situation. True. That's not, I'm not arguing that point. So we need to but, educate the public as to what it is we do and why we do it. And, and I agree with that. But also, but also, I should tell you this, that it could be the other reasonable officer could also be wrong. See? So that's why, that's why. Well, I mean, that's your perspective. I'm not saying what, if he's the chief was wrong or right. But I'm saying when you raise that question, you can't assume that, that all officers are reasonable, are found with a reasonable objective matter. But that's what our own United States Supreme Court bases their decisions on. The, okay, I don't want to get into this, but I want to, okay, just a second. I think what he's saying is, as a community, they think about things on their terms. And as police officers, we think of things on our terms. Right. And that's what needs to marry up. And, and, and that's it. The idea is to try to get the community and law enforcement together to think in the same way. Right. That's not, and that's not, right, and that's not, and that's right. That's why we are here, because it's not, what's happening. 